Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, just wanted to do a quick video to uh, cover a topic that has been requested. Uh, I've gotten a couple of messages on Facebook and uh, a couple of comments on uh, YouTube about um, business policies in uh, my eBay store. Um, so uh, give me a few minutes. Let me get a few things together and uh, we'll head on over to the eBay store. See you in a second. All right, here we are. Uh, over on my eBay store. Um, just wanted to go over some uh, some information on business policies. Um, I use business policies to more efficiently manage um, or pre-configure um, things for my store. Covering things like my shipping policies, my payment policies, my return policies, things like that. So the easiest way to get to these is to go into your seller hub, go to your active listings, Come on eBay. Scroll down here on the left hand side and you'll see the link that says business policies. We'll click on that. This may look a little overwhelming when it comes up. Whoop, come on lights. Alright, so I've got a handful. These are all, all of them. There's about 10 or 12 of them, but they're all um, shipping returns payments. Um, and you can look at all your policies, or you can click on these links right here to um, to look at your specific ones, your payments. So apparently we've got uh, two payment policies. Uh, I've got one on the on the policies. You can set up. Let's go in here and create policy, and look at what you can provide. You can pr just give it a name. Uh, on all my policies, I always try and make the policy name and the policy description as descriptive as possible, so I know exactly what it is when I select it. Um, all these are just defaults that you can select when you create a listing or manage your listings. So, um, and I am not opted in to um, eBay's manage payments, so I don't know how if they'll look any different upon um, if you're if you're opted into that. But uh, you can go in here and just create a policy. Let's say this will be my uh, say we've got a secondary PayPal account, and I want to sell certain items and have those payments go to a different PayPal account. So we'll just say this is Craig. Ah. Craig's pay, PayPal. Uh, I usually just copied that. Uh, you can set it as the default, meaning every time you create a listing that this would be the payment policy. Um, you can click on PayPal. Enter the PayPal email address. Uh, you can uh, Check this box that says uh, require immediate payment when buyer uses payment now. Uh, you can do merchant credit cards. Um, but you have to have a merchant account. Um, you can still accept money orders, cashier's checks, personal check, pay on pickup, um, and other. Um, so all you do is hit uh, save there, and that's going to create a new payment policy, which would show up just like these. Um, Let's go here and look at this one. This is our default. Uh, do require immediate payment when they do buy it now. So really basic, just payment information, not that not that detailed. Um, I'm gonna save the the one that everybody really wants to hear till last. So please hang around for that. Now let's look at the return policies. Um, I've got several. I've only got three. My default is free returns 30 days. And see in my description, I know exactly what this is. I accept returns. Seller pays for shipping, return shipping, is for 30 days, and I give money back. Um, I don't know why I've got. I don't know why I've got two here. I need to look at that. And I've got. Uh, I, ultimately, I could com re, uh, combine these two. Uh, but down here, no returns. Returns not accepted on these items. I've got one item. I don't know what that item is. Um, anytime you create these policies, you can click on this one. It'll tell you exactly what item you have. What do I not offer a return on? Oh, it's a VHS that I bought. It said it was tested, uh, it powered on, but would not do anything, so I just listed it as parts and took no returns. So, same kind of thing here. Create your policy, return policy, um, new, new return. New return policy, just give it the same. 
All right, so you can set this as your default. Your return policies, you can have domestic and international. So if you're doing um, just domestic, you would want to not check your international returns. Uh, you can set the number of days that you want to uh, accept returns, 14, 30, or 60. You can set who pays um, the return shipping. And you can have a policy where you can offer replacement um, of the item. So I would typically only uh, suggest that if you've got multiple quantity listings uh, and you know that you can just turn around and ship them the exact same item to replace the one that they, uh, they ordered and they've generated a return policy for. Uh, and then here it gives you a note offering a minimum 30 day return policy helps you their listings qualify for top rated seller, top rated seller benefits. Um, same thing on international returns. But uh, so you set one policy that covers both. You want to have just a specific policy that covers just international. Uh, you can turn off the domestic and turn that on. So all you do is hit save. Um, and it's going to create these. Uh, I do need to look into why I've got two of these. Uh, I've got 33 listings there. I really think I can combine those two. But they're uh, very basic. Um, so let's get to the good stuff, the shipping. Um, shipping policies... Um, keep in mind that if you don't use policies, every time you create a listing um, and you put in a, a flat rate value or a calculated or something, it's going to create a, a shipping policy if it's different than any shipping policy that exists. Um, and also keep in mind that if you do listing for mobile, that you will not have access to shipping po any of these policies. Um, you have to do these on the desktop as far as I understand it. I don't do a lot of listing on... Uh, mobile but from my understanding you cannot access these on mobile as of now so I try and keep these to a, kind of a minimum um, pretty much just thinking down the lines of things that I typically ship um, all you see the majority of my uh, a lot I've got a lot of items that are uh, first class and this is my default all my first class items I charge four dollars ninety nine cents for first class seven ninety nine for priority and I offer one day handling so that tells me exactly what this business policy is for shipping. Let's look at that. Come on, open up. Gives it just the name and the description. So you can go in here and offer your different, I could offer an express if I wanted to here. Um, you set your handling time. You can offer whatever type of shipping you do. I happen to do flat rate shipping. I don't do calculated. Um, I really don't have anything that goes freight. Um, so you go in, you add your, uh, the different services you want to offer and what your cost is. And if you want to offer, if you have multiple quantity, what the, each additional of that item would cost you, what would, would cost the buyer for that delivery service. Uh, one day handling time here, are the, all the options, one, two, three, you got all the way up to 30. I don't know why they skip anything in there, but, uh, that's helpful. Um, I still do GSP. Some people are getting away from that. Um, you can offer uh, alternate international shipping options, uh, which I believe is how people are handling the um, the new offering by by a pirate ship, the simple export. I would assume um, you can do flat rate, same cost to all buyers, and then you would set your settings uh, there for. Uh, the Canada and the rest of the the, the, the world. Um, I don't use any shipping rate tables because I assume that would apply to calculated. And I don't exclude any shipping locations, but you would be able to do that. So that's all you've got to do there. And you can go through and create these for each little category of packages that you ship. So that's all my first class. My, my medium size um, packages, I use a $9.99 US priority one day handling. Um, I've got a lot there. Um, with my first class and those uh, USS, uh, the priority shipping, shipments, um, overall I'm probably breaking even. On, four, on the four ninety nine first class, sometimes I'm probably, probably cost me five, five and a quarter. I'm losing a little money, but there are some items I ship for two, you know, the, the sub three dollar range. So I really think in the end I'm either breaking even or, uh, or making a little money. Um, I've got a flat rate for 
425 for my media mail for books. I've got 10 items over there. Um, and look at that. Same kind of thing. All I did for my um, my shipping, the service was select media mail, 425. Each additional book is an additional 425. If you want to create a free shipping shipping policy, all you do is select the services and you click this free shipping and it will blank those out where you can't supply it. Um, one day handling, exactly the same thing for international. I've got a 499 economy um, where if somebody wants to, uh, a lot of times I'll do like FedEx, what do I have uh, in that one? FedEx Home. I've just got economy delivery. That will cover me for um, uh, FedEx Smart Post, anything like that, which I really don't use that often. Uh, I just still have one day business handling, one business day handling. I've got a 9.99, and see, as these other ones get a little bit crazier, the fewer items I have on these policies. I've got a 9.99 economy, which I've only got two items on. Uh, that's just a little bit heavier item. And I charge 18.99 for any VHS DVD combos. That is FedEx one day handling. I've only got one over there. That is FedEx ground or FedEx home delivery. $18.99 with each additional being $18.99. I may ship some that cost me $23. I mean, very rarely do I ship anything that costs me more than $23, $24. And if it's, if it's these things, I've got enough margin on them that uh, I can afford to lose a little bit of money every now and then on shipping these larger items. Um, but see, you can go directly down into each list, the, the listings that, um, that all these policies have. The, the biggest advantage to using business policies if I want to change all these 118 listings, I don't have to go to my active listings, search for these items. If I'm looking for certain, sorry, if I'm looking for certain, um, oh, go away. If I am looking for a certain uh, class of item in my um, in my active items, I don't have to go search them and do a bulk edit. I just go in here. If I want to say I want to up my first class payments, uh, shipping charges to be five and a quarter, all I do is come here and change this to five and a quarter, 5.25. I want to change this to 850, 8.5. I'm not going to save this, but I do that and it applies to all, and I hit save and it applies to every listing that has that business policy. If I wanted to go through and change my PayPal account, all I do is go to my payment policy and I modify. That's my watch PayPal account that we use. All I'd have to do is go in here and change the PayPal account. And boom, it applies to every listing that uses that PayPal account. Um, so these can be very useful. Uh, it allows you to do bulk editing, not at the listing level, but more at the policy level. Um, you can do them both ways. I find it easier to do this. Um, but anytime you manually go in and on mobile especially and create try and list something and you put in well I'm gonna charge twenty three dollars and fifty cents to ship this item it's gonna create a business policy for that shipping and you can end up with a lot of those especially if you're listing from mobile I know a lot of people do that I really wish that eBay would give you the same functionality from mobile as you get from the desktop versions but uh, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to talk about in the uh, the business policies they're very helpful um, they're very easy to use. Um, if you end up with, sometimes I end up with a couple of uh, business policies where I have made a special. Um, I try not to, but every now and then I end up with a policy where I create a, an odd um, shipping amount or something like that. You can go through and click on cleanup policies. And cleanup policies, I don't have any that need to be cleaned up. Uh, it's currently running. It will go through and give you the option to delete all of your policies that have not been in use in a certain amount of days or things like that. Uh, you can consolidate shipping policies. If you want to consolidate a um, policy, you can go in and reassign, change policies for these listings. So I want to put all these onto this listing. All I do is do that, and it just it assigns all those listings to the other policy. It's just so much easier, in my opinion, to manage it at this level. Uh, you can create multiple listings, but uh, if you don't have any questions, please uh, drop a comment down below with any questions. Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram, uh, Landshark Picker. Um, you can also find me on Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out. I don't mind helping anybody in any way I can. 
Um, if you like this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe. Um, turn on that bell notification so you know when uh, I release any new videos. But I appreciate y'all watching, and I hope you have a great day.